Microsoft just leaked its next five years. And are you gonna pick up this Deep Earth PS5? How's it going everyone? Welcome to PS Ready. I hope you had a great weekend. I had an awesome weekend. We officially had our first day where when I went outside in the morning, I saw my breath fog and I looked at my phone and it was 59 degrees. So I immediately went and bought some corn stalks, bought a bunch of pumpkins and put up my Halloween decorations. And then I spent about 15 or 20 hours playing Lies of P. This game is awesome. I played a ton of Souls-like inspired games, you know, heavy air quotes on inspired, and I basically had given up hope before playing Lies of P because I was sick of getting really hyped for the next one that was going to finally feel like a Souls-like but do its own new thing as well. Lies of P is finally that game. It feels like Bloodborne when you're playing it. It has its own atmosphere though. It takes place in a place called Krat, which is like France, I guess, and the whole Pinocchio story works way better than I thought it would because it's like tongue-in-cheek. When you die in the game it says lie or die uh the loading screen i noticed like the progress bar is pinocchio's nose growing so it's like tongue-in-cheek it's pretty cool it's got a dark setting the cool new thing i think it does is let you change the blade and the handle on your weapon so you can make like an electric sword or a fire baton or you can make a blunt sword handled weapon like it actually gets pretty cool and the best part is the menus are all laid out like a souls like game so when you look at a weapon it tells you which stat it scales with with a letter grade which is exactly what I want to see it's just so much fun I got kind of steamrolled by the first boss and I felt pretty bad but then something just activated in me and I have not really died since there was one guy in a fire hallway who gave me a little bit of trouble but I am flying through this game and I absolutely love it cannot recommend it enough buy it it's so awesome I'm cutting in here after the intro because of this massive Xbox leak that happened overnight and just before I jump into it uh, this sucks for Microsoft to have all of this information out there. I don't necessarily think this is as bad as the Nvidia leak that happened a while ago, which if you're keeping track, every game on that list has basically been announced and released in pretty much the same order as that leak. So as far as I'm concerned, it is it's extremely real. But with all that in mind, it is really cool to know what is coming up in the future of Xbox. And there is one key aspect of this that I feel like is very relevant to Sony. So we'll start out with that. So Phil Spencer has been saying that there's not going to be a mid-gen refresh on the Xbox Series X just because they're satisfied with the product they put out. They think it's extremely powerful and they don't think it's been taken advantage of yet, which from a PlayStation fan perspective, that's how a lot of people and partially myself included feel about the PlayStation 5. Like Sony is allegedly releasing a PS5 Pro next year and we don't really feel like there's any reason for it because they haven't put out any games that take advantage of the current PS5. So why do they need to put out one that costs five or 600 bucks? just to say it runs games at 4k 60 like why don't they actually start optimizing games for the console that's already out and make games run at 4k 60 on that you know but as it turns out from these leaks Microsoft is doing a mid-gen refresh but I feel like the reason Phil Spencer said they weren't is because it's not the same as what's going on with Sony so instead of doing an Xbox Series X Pro they're doing a revision of it that looks completely different it kind of looks like I don't know the trash can Mac Pro that came out I think back in 2013 it's it's cylindrical instead of square. They're going with a smaller chip in it. It's running more efficiently. It's going to have two terabytes of storage. And just like the PS5 Slim, it's not going to have a disk drive natively. Hopefully Xbox does offer one that you can pick up secondhand because as much as people love to buy games digitally, like we are the dinosaurs here who buy games physically. I like buying games physically. I like having discs. So if I would upgrade my Series X to this one, I would really want there to be an extra disk drive, but they call it adorably all digital there's nothing adorable about all digital that's the like stepping stone to only streaming games and i'm just going to be real if we ever get to that point that's why i'm making my exit i am not going to stream games it is not the future as far as i'm concerned and i want to be able to download my games or be able at the very best option to buy them on disc that's just how i feel about the situation i'm actually kind of happy that xbox isn't going to do a pro model this gen mainly because it means that the ps5 current version like 
and the slim will be supported in perpetuity. Developers won't be able to just kind of ignore it because they'll always have to make games for the Xbox Series X as well. And honestly, just like with the PS5 Pro, it feels like a money grab to kind of go after that mid-gen refresh market, especially knowing that the next Xbox and the next generation of PlayStation, presumably as well, will be coming in 2028, which is far off at this point, but that does line up. Like we got the first gen of this console in 2020, and now we're going to get the next gen of it in 2028. That's an eight year generation, and that's pretty much the standard at this point, except for the 360 and PS3 generation, which were longer because of recession. So even though the whole pandemic and all that happened this gen, it's not going to stop this one from being around eight years. The most interesting thing from this leak is a new Xbox controller. It's gonna be called the Xbox Universal Controller, and it's not going to have adaptive triggers, but it is going to have a gyroscope, it's going to be rechargeable, and it's going to have haptic feedback. I think the most important thing there is haptic feedback. Obviously a huge upgrade as well as the fact that it's rechargeable. I know the Elite is rechargeable, but I hate that controller. I've had every iteration of it, and it is the worst quality controlled controller ever, and especially for the premium they sell it for. I don't understand why its shelf life is like a third of the just regular old Xbox controller. Personally, when it comes to adaptive triggers, I don't really care. It's a cool novelty. I just haven't had it used by enough games to really care about it at this point. And when you look at the battery life of the DualSense and DualSense Edge, it seems like that's just one feature that's really sucking the battery life down. So Xbox probably realized that and said, hey, people don't use this feature that much on PS5 and it gets rid of battery life. So let's just take it out and make sure our controller actually has decent battery life. So I don't really care there. And there was an Xbox handheld on their like future projection. And there's an email allegedly talking about people joining that team. Uh, I want to be excited for that. I just assume at this point with how much cloud is talked about that it's going to be sort of like the Logitech G cloud or the PlayStation portal, AKA a handheld that is not for me and not something that I care about at all. And then finally, there was a bunch of Bethesda game leaks, which to be fair, were all from before they were acquired. So all these could have changed, but man, are they exciting? There's apparently an Oblivion remaster coming, which out of all the Elder Scrolls games, that's the one uh, I have the least time put into. There's a Fallout 3 remaster coming, which if you take all the Fallout games, that is by far my favorite in terms of story and the world. And then the coolest thing on there was a sequel to Doom Eternal, which is being called Doom Year Zero, which I guess is a callback to a wad pack from the original Doom. I don't really know, but that's awesome. I'm so excited about that. I thought that it would be done with Doom after Doom Eternal, especially with the ending of the expansions. Uh, it's kind of crazy, but it turns out they're just going back to the zero year of Doom. So I will always take more of that because Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal are two of the best shooters of all time. And the sequel, Doom Zero Year, is going to be a massive get for Xbox to not have on PlayStation. I know I love to say, well, it's not that big of a deal that we don't have Starfield. It is a big deal to me that PlayStation will not have Doom. So yeah, it's nice to know what's going on with Xbox. Uh, it turns out they were trying to buy Nintendo at one point, which, you know, that's a little bit crazy if you ask me. I would prefer that don't happen because Nintendo is fine on their own doing their own thing with their own consoles. But yeah, it's cool to see that they're not doing a mid-gen refresh because that means current PS5 owners are going to be supported going into the future. I'm excited about Indiana Jones. I'm excited about Dishonored 3, excited about a new Doom game and Ghostwire Tokyo 2. So things are looking good over at Xbox. And the one email that really stood out to me is that they recognize how big of a misstep it was to not have any big games in 2022. They know that really hurt them. They were primed with an extremely powerful console to succeed this generation. And I feel like the one-two punch of Halo Infinite bombing, then not having anything to follow it up really hurt them. I was gonna do a pickup for the weekend video, but honestly, it wasn't that great of a showcase. Like there were some cool games. I was super hyped for Separate Ways, which is coming out this week. We're finally getting that. A little bit of controversy around that started because it's going to be $10. And as far as I'm concerned, they earned that $10. I'm excited after seeing the gameplay trailer today. It looks like it's gonna be a full ADA campaign with no cut content. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm excited to pick that up. The first game, which I think is called Baby Steps, looks awesome. I'm definitely going to play that. Uh, there was a couple other things, but outside of those, uh, there was nothing too crazy, in my opinion, at least. Like, I'd give it a B minus or C plus. But one thing that was kind of cool, and honestly, I jumped up to do a video really quick when they announced this, was the new collection of covers and controllers for the PlayStation 5. They're calling it the Deep Earth Collection, and the blue color is going to be Cobalt, and the red color is like Volcano Red, and then there's Sterling Silver, and basically they're metallic colored plates and controllers that Sony is putting out. So whether you get the dual sense or the plates, they're going to be shinier and sort of metallic. And the red is a deeper red than what you get from the 
cosmic red ones. It was more of a burnt burgundy and it was matte when they released that. And they also, I think, have a blue right now, but it's more of a pastel neon style blue. And the new cobalt blue is just like blue. Now, at first when I saw the trailer and I saw the red and I saw the blue, I was like, oh, are they doing like a Labor Day, like a uh, red, white and blue themed one? A little bit of patriotic action going on here. And even with the sterling silver, it kind of still does look like a patriotic collection, but I don't know, maybe they were like, ah, oh, we can't announce it during Labor Day. So we'll just announce it later and take that theming off. But regardless, I think the strategy here that Sony is employing is just make as many covers as possible, get these out into the wild so that we can get these PS5 sold and get people to move on to the PS5 Slim. Uh, it's a weird strategy. I don't really know why they're announcing so many consoles right before they announce a brand new one. Like theoretically, you would want them to space this out over the entire year instead of saying, hey, there's new covers coming out in September uh, and October and November. But uh, yeah, then you're going to be able to get the PS5 Slim in just a couple months. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted a red PS5 that's not as matte as the Cosmic Red that we got earlier when the PS5 came out, you have an option here. And if you want a blue that's actually blue, they got you covered. And if you want a silver that kind of looks like plastic, they've got you covered too. That's the one I would avoid because I'm positive the paint on these is going to scratch like a mother. But also around the same time as this state of play, Sony reminded us why we love PlayStation with some previews of Spider-Man 2. I watched my friend Jake Baldino's. I didn't really watch anyone else's because as far as gaming impressions go, he's like the guy I go to for everything. I'm sure you do too because I don't know, his channel's massive. And it just basically confirmed everything I already thought about this game, which is good. I'm not saying it in a bad way, but it's just going to be more Spider-Man. You're going to have two Spider-Man you can play as, you can hop between them. Uh, the SSD aspect of this is really cool because they're doing the GTA 5 thing where you can switch between the characters whenever you want and just seeing the map zoom out then you switch to miles and it zooms in and you're already in the game in just a couple seconds is awesome there's also the sort of like spider wingsuit thing that they've got going on where you can fly all over town and i'm telling you right now the two things i will not be using in this game are that or fast travel the whole point to me at least of being spider-man is swinging around new york city like that's just a fun thing to do on the steam deck or on my ps5 or even my main gaming pc so I don't really care about fast travel or being able to fly around. And honestly, I don't think that power really matches Spider-Man all that well, but I get why they're doing it. They probably took in all the data and said, oh, like normies who play this game are complaining that they don't travel fast enough. So we can make it like 15% faster if we give them a wingsuit or something like that. I don't know. I'm just not going to use it. You don't have to use it. So I'm not going to use it. Jake also pointed out that this is like a sequel in the truest form. So there's just more combat options available to you. And he said it was a little overwhelming, but he got used to it and it looked really Really cool with his gameplay that he captured. I saw later on that uh, the story in this game is going to be roughly the same length as the original Spider-Man game, so around 17 hours, and I platinum the first Spider-Man, and it took me around 27 to 30 hours, and they said it'll take about the same this time around, but one thing that I'm kind of like torn on is if I like this change, they said that they put a lot more into the side quests, like you'll have to find them all over the map, they're a little bit more, you know, involved in the side quests we had before. I, I don't know. I, I liked the crimes, the random crimes. You know, you just do a few of them as you were on your way to the next story mission. Like they weren't amazing by any stretch of the word. Do we really need a Bloody Baron style like side quest that's like chained together in Spider-Man? I don't know. I'm sure when I play it, I won't care as much, but I was like, that's the one thing where I feel like I was in the minority. I was like, I like how quick you can clean up the side quests in Miles Morales and Spider-Man PS4. But yeah, I don't think you needed me to talk about Spider-Man to get you hyped. Uh, the last thing I want to shout out is I'm wearing a new, I'm wearing a graphic t-shirt on the Channel, which I never do. It's my buddy CZ's World's new merch. It's like a metal band theme. This says CZ's World if you can read it. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't wear YouTuber merch, but uh, he's one of my best friends. So I figured I'd shout him out here on the channel right at the end. Kind of the worst shout out of all time, but if you're at the end of the video, I guess you might care about what YouTubers I think are cool. And once again, I'm giving a shout out to someone with over a million subs. Like they need it at all from me. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's all I got for you in this early week news update. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.